Welcome to video number two of Hidden Traffic Secrets. In our last video, I shared a proven technique that will help you grow your traffic fast. So now you've got this powerful list of posts. The question is, how do you use them to increase your page views? For bloggers in any niche, the number one best source to increase your page views today is your reader. But first, let's think about a typical topic on your blog. Your typical topic is not in order. How did that happen? Maybe the posts published are too general. Maybe they are random and not in sequential order. Maybe they require an advanced skill set that your new reader just can't follow. However it got there, your topic does not have a beginning, middle, or an end. Therefore, the topic has an incomplete storyline. Now, what do I mean by storyline? Each main topic on your blog should have its own story. A complete story goes into three distinct phases, a beginning, middle, and end. Do you see the pattern? It's similar to a novel. The storyline begins with chapter one and ends with the last chapter when your novel is complete. In the end, the typical topic doesn't teach you. It doesn't encourage you, and the odds that it will actually solve a major problem is very slim. To show you what I mean, meet Jane. She's a loyal blog fan, and a while back, she fell in love with a bedroom she saw on Carrie Ann's blog post, This Littlewood Farms. Today, Jane decides to make over her bedroom. So what does she do? She goes to the blog and types in Coral Bedroom in the search bar. Because Jane was so specific, she finds it on her first attempt. The post starts with before pictures, and Carrie Ann shares why she decided to repaint her bedroom and what color she chose. The post ends with after pictures and a great roundup of the finished project. Her bedroom is gorgeous and picture perfect. As Jane's reading, she begins to realize that she has a ton of questions. What is the wood trim called? How did Carrie Ann paint it? That must have taken forever. Any time saving tips? Jane's probably bummed out that her favorite blogger hasn't hooked her up. So what does she do next? She writes down the name of the paint color and she bounces. On to find a tutorial on Pinterest because her topic is incomplete. So how do we help Jane or any reader find answers to their questions inside your posts? The secret to increasing your page views fast is to stop leaving your readers hanging and answer their questions by linking to your other posts. This is called an internal link. Internal links are links between individual pages on your own website. Yep. Your internal links can help solve your reader's problems simply by adding what they need to know when they need to know it. I want you to ask yourself, are you providing helpful links to your readers? What makes a link helpful anyway? Before you select any link, make sure you answer these two questions for your reader. Number one, what problems will a beginner have? And number two, will my post explain the solution? Pretty much any link should have one objective and the only result that really matters. To get your reader to click over to another blog post. What makes a good internal link? Here's the formula that gets the clicks. A great link will be helpful and explain that you have the answer. Don't make people think. Place it where you anticipate the question. It will have compelling anchor text that benefits your reader. And link to the post which has the answer. There are four big problems with most internal links. First, they are easy to forget. Second, it's difficult to predict what your readers don't know. And third, they can mess up the flow of your post storyline. Lastly, they are hard to find since your blog posts are not in order. How to find what answers are missing inside your posts? By finding the missing topics. I have developed an effective storyline template that solves problems for your reader, is fast and easy to use, uses your current posts, and will increase page views with each visit. It's called the Topic Gap Finder. You might have heard it called a Topic Cluster, Pillar Page, Discovery Template, or something else. What is a Topic Gap Finder? It's a quick formula to clarify topics your blog is missing. Here are the Topic Gap Finder steps. The Topic Gap Finder starts by answering five questions from your reader's perspective. Creating a quick topic clusters of missing subtopics that solve your reader's problem in a logical order. Problems your readers are searching for. Then picking a post which covers each of these topics and contains a lesson where you point out the problem. And then you link to the post on your site which solves that problem. Here's why a topic gap finder works. When learning something new, people don't know what they don't know. When your reader can click over to answers, before they have them, you make it simpler for her. 
By anticipating your reader's questions, you walk them down a logical path that gives them the confidence with incredible value. Best of all, you use your existing content to build the Topic Gap Finder. But Laurie, all of this content is already featured on my blog. Will readers click it again? Of course they will, if you're willing to take the time to link it in a way that solves their problem. An old post isn't likely to be remembered by your readers, and if it is, they probably weren't reading it from a solution perspective. So you're doing your readers a favor by reintroducing it in such a helpful way. Are you ready to learn how to find your content gaps? Let's do this. Part one, the topic gap finder is made up of five questions. What are the common challenges my readers go through? What do you wish you had known when you had started? At what point do you typically experience issues? What is easy now that used to be difficult? And lastly, what sets you apart from everyone else on this specific topic? For example, let's go back to Carrie Ann's post. Let's say that you're a decor blogger that provides incredible DIYs for the home. Your post before and after Coral Bedroom has 78 comments, is a hit, and a huge traffic potential. It is definitely on our power post list. Let's take a closer look at what a topic gap might look like using Carrie Ann's Coral Bedroom. The answers to our five questions could be, the skill of how to paint a wall is my reader's most common challenge. The best bedroom wall colors is what I wish I had known before I started. Researching different ways to do wood accent wall is where I experienced issues. I am a rock star at cutting wood molding, which makes me an expert on this topic. And I have the best painting tips, so now it's super easy for me. If we clean it up a little and put it in a logical order, these are the solutions to the problems that our reader might have. Part two is topic clusters. A topic cluster is a group of connected subtopics that work together to form a larger one. Cluster your reader's problems into subtopics. A new painter doesn't realize how many questions she's going to have when starting a room makeover. So let's point out a few subtopics like this. Using the main topic of wall paint, we'll quickly list the type, color, skill, material, and then some tips. Simply identify which of our questions apply to each of our topic cluster. For instance, wood accent wall would be the type, bedroom wall color is the color, how to paint a wall is the skill, how to cut wood molding is the material we used, and that leaves painting tips. See, we have identified several problems already. Next, we can find out if the topic is popular. Part three is keyword search volume and is completely optional. If you aren't already familiar with keyword search, just feel free to skip this step. There are many ways to do keyword search. However, if you want a super quick way to get some ideas of subtopics that you might be missing, just simply type your subtopic into Google and wait to press enter. Notice the pre-populated phrases list. These are the most popular searches. Do any of these help drill down a topic you've already blogged about? Or would you like to add any of these as new content? How to paint a wall would be perfect for our list. If you continue by clicking enter and scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll notice another list of search terms. These are the highest search volume. How to paint a room fast and how to paint a ceiling could go on our list. Just for funsies, going back to our example, if we look up part one, the answers to our questions, plus part two, our topic clusters, then this shows the total search volume potential of this specific topic gap. Moving on, it's time to let your reader know that you have the answer. Part four is finding a few published posts which coordinate with your final list of subtopics. Let's go back to our example. We've matched the five questions to the topic cluster keywords. Now take it one step further by matching the topic cluster to your post which has the answer. Carrie Ann already has three published posts to answer three relevant problems. Bam! This is what Carrie Ann is missing, two fundamental posts that she can link to over and over again, how to paint a wall and how to cut wood molding. She can add those to her calendar to write new content. We have now found the gaps that readers probably wish they were already directed to. Looking at it now, can you visualize the storyline or the journey that your readers want to go on? Lastly, link to your posts. Part four is to add internal links to your post. This is the clickable part of the formula. You'll want to add compelling hypertext. Don't use your block title unless you've put a lot of thought into it. Use text that solves your reader's problems and is a little mysterious and a little intriguing. You want them to click on it, so be helpful but vague. 
let's take a peek at what the anchor text would look like. In this post before and after coral bedroom, Carrie Ann explains the process of caulking the wood and painting the walls and trim in one short paragraph. As a blogger, I get it. Carrie Ann has painted so many rooms. Doing a full tutorial is a waste of her time at this point. So how could she help a new reader and save herself time and increase her page views? By adding an internal link, which solves the problem, at the right time. Carrie Ann already has a blog post called The Best Painting Tip Ever, so let's quickly add it where she talks about painting. It's helpful, yet it's vague, and it's clear what to do. Let's see another one. Carrie Ann quickly states that she came up with a way to add architectural interest to her walls by using an oversized Harlequin pattern. As a reader, I am dying to know how she came up with this pattern and how she did it. So let's quickly add it where she talks about how she came up with the wood trim pattern. When using a numbered list, one tip is to add your favorite number to spark curiosity. In this example, we added click here to see seven wood accent walls that you can do too. Number four is my favorite. We can add our last internal link when Carrie Ann is talking about the paint color she chose and her quick decorating tip. We'll put our readers' minds at ease by telling them, don't worry, I've hooked you up. Click here to pick the perfect bedroom wall color. Then we tease them a little using their fear, yet putting their mind back at ease by saying it's foolproof. You get the idea. To recap, here's the beauty of the Topic Gap Finder. It saves time. Use old posts to fill in content holes. Dominate your topic as the go-to expert. Train readers to click problem-solving links and increase your traffic with multiple page views each visit. There are so many great ways you can put the Topic Gap Finder to use. It simply fills in the gap for any niche. Now let's take one more look and see how the new gap topics pull it all together. This is our formula for creating effective post series, email freebies, and link strategies. Yep, it can even increase page rank. You'll see how it comes together nicely. Follow this formula and soon every one of your readers will be increasing your page views daily. Here are a couple examples in action. Holly at Kids Activity Blog created Fun With Letters A to Z. They use it as an email freebie. It combines their expertise of preschool age activities with free printables. Cindy at Skip to My Lou has a Get Kids Sewing Topic Gap. It combines her How to Sew series, Love of Homemade Gifts, with her free printables. You might be asking yourself, this is great, Laurie, but how do I set all this up? Of course, Reconalyst can do it for you and a lot more. Over the years, I've created many versions of the Topic Gap Finder. In my experience, this formula is by far the easiest, most user-friendly, but still finds your hidden topics the fastest. To make things even easier for you, I've included a free printable template for you to download. This way you can use it as a quick start. However, if you prefer to start a basic one yourself, my recommendation is using Google Sheets and Google Docs, so it's available anytime with anyone you choose. It's perfect for a team. Yep, I've created a simple Google Sheets template just to jumpstart your topic gap finder. Let's take a look inside Google Sheets to see how this is done. Here on your screen is an example of what a topic gap finder looks like. You can easily add the subtopic for each topic. Notice how you can sort the data high to low for each one of the columns. You can, and you can also filter the subtopic. By adding a new column or row, it's as simple as using WordPress you just type it in. There are 10 more things I love about Google Sheets, but I wanted to show you just a few today. Now stay tuned for tomorrow's video when I share with you my number one traffic hack.